Yo, what's up? This is Rockland. Today on Passport Kings, I'm going to take you on the trip that I took to South Africa on the Delta One. Engage. I'm Rockland. I travel the globe for leisure, exploration, and education about different cultures. Join me, and you too can be royalty. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. exotic places all across the globe, but just thinking about sitting in one seat for many hours makes my butt hurt now as I'm preparing this script. When I recently went to South Africa for my visit to Johannesburg, I was very concerned about the condition my body would be in by the time I walked off the plane. On my way to South Africa, I was lucky enough to be flying standby for a very low price. Standby is excellent when it comes to the price of the trip, but there are two things that are very worrisome when it comes to getting these cheap tickets. Number one is if I would actually get on, because if that plane gets full of people who are paying full price, or even luggage slash cargo that was completely paid for, they will consider the weight of the plane. And if you and the paid cargo combined is tipping your scales, the plane may take off without you. The other concern is that if you do manage to get on the plane, they may toss you in any seat that is still available, which means you can wind up sitting very far away from your companion and even worse, squeeze them between two strangers that might be overweight, a chronic cougher, or just smelling bad. I could have taken African Airlines to get to South Africa and have a guaranteed seat like I had for my way home. But to save the money and time in the air, I gave the standby flight a chance. And man oh man was that a great idea. Cause when we did get confirmed for the flight, we got the hookup from a friend behind the counter and got put up in Delta One. Delta One is the most exclusive cabins in the sky. This was not just any old hookup. As soon as we saw how fancy the seats were, I pulled out my phone to do a price check on this flight. No lie, the joint was a jaw dropping $10,000 for our one way 15 hour trip. The advertisement said it combined the best features of business class and first class into one Delta experience. Now Delta One is an international business class product available on all international long haul flights as well as transcontinental flights between New York and Los Angeles or San Francisco. The term Delta First Class is still used to describe the premium cabin or shorter domestic flights. But with me being up here, I made it my business to make the most out of this experience. Maybe not the beats by Dre, but it's a good, good pair. With every meal on long haul international flights, you enjoy complimentary beer, wine, and spirits. Stay tuned for this quick commercial break and I'll be right back. Passport Kings has always been in the business to try to help you make money online so you can travel more. That's why I was always giving away this great opportunity for you to learn the travel industry and make money in the travel business. But some people said recruiting is not something that they want to do on their everyday basis. And I can understand that. Sometimes recruiting can take a really big toll on you. Sometimes you just want to make money without any risk and without going around telling people about your opportunity. In this case, I've came up with the excellent way for you to make money from home and still be the boss of your own time. What Passport Kings has become involved in is called a ride. You'll work for Fortune 500 companies doing customer care and answering questions from home on your telephone. But like I said, the best part about it is you make your own schedule. Work when you want, don't work when you don't want. There's no one over your shoulder telling you where you have to be and what time you have to get there. Come over to www.passportkings.com slash arise and learn about this opportunity for yourself. Benefits to Delta One was the meal service in the air, and the only U.S. carrier to offer lie flat seats on every long haul flight. That's right, I didn't have to sit up. I was able to lay completely flat like in a twin size bed. Was it the most comfortable bed I've ever laid in? Not by a long shot, but is it the most comfortable way to fly? Yes, yes, and yes. 
By the time I ate and looked at a movie or two while getting tipsy, then dozing off to sleep, 15 hours felt more like four to five hours. I swore before we actually landed that I was going to realize that something went wrong with their tracking of the different time zones and we had at least another 8 to 10 hours to go, but I was wrong. It really did take all of the chore out of the long flight. If I ever get everything my way, there is no way I would sit up in a seat ever again. Being able to afford 10 G's for my long distance flights is a new goal of mine. And the flight attendant, she took good care of me. She told me how happy she was to see one of us up in the dope seats. I took it she always has to serve snobs up in those seats, and me being the cool dude that I am made her feel a lot more relaxed. And her and I talked about everything from the best places to see in South Africa, her job, we cracked jokes, and she even looked out for me when another flight attendant tried to serve me a dish that did not look up to par. I mean a strawberry's missing off the top of my pie. But she just walked by to make sure my dessert was to my liking, and she was furious when she saw what the dessert lady gave me. She took mine and came back with a smoking hot pie with a fresh piece of fruit and let me know that others get treated like royalty up there and that I should too. I wouldn't have even noticed it if she didn't point it out, but I'm happy she did. Lastly, she introduced me to something it seems like I would have already known about, which was a mixture of coffee and Bailey's Irish liquor. I know what I'll be drinking on flights from now on when I have to fly at night. That was the icing on the great experience cake that is Delta One for long haul. In most cases, the seats are arranged in reverse herringbone configuration, meaning all seats point towards the center or towards the window. This is among the best ways to increase privacy because no traveler is directly facing another. However, our seats was reverse herringbone configuration. The footrest on the seats pointed towards the aisle instead of away from it. It decreased our privacy, but our faces were closer to each other, which made talking back and forth a lot more simple than it would have been the other way around. We left Atlanta about 8 at night, and after a short while, it began to get late. Most people in the area started dozing off or settling in for the night. I was already dressed for pure comfort, so I just sat there and turned on the TV that was planted in the side panel. The first thing you see is the amount of time the flights have left, but also an excellent selection of TV shows, premium TV shows, movies, and a few touchscreen video games. And there was a few superhero movies that I had not kept up with and I wanted to see. I planned to watch a few and type on my laptop, but by the time I got to the third act of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which was my first movie, I was starting to doze off too. The next morning, the flight attendant woke me up to serve me breakfast. Again, the food was very impressive. This is around the time I realized that we actually were about to get off the plane in another three hours. I cannot stress enough how fast the flight seemed. If the amount of time sitting on a plane is what's stopping you from going to Africa, I suggest you do it at least once so you can see how the flight is just not as long as you may be making it out to be. And it was not only because I was laying down. Because on my way home, we did take South African Airlines and we was not able to get luxury seating again. A few movies, a few drinks, and a nap or two, and you'll be home. And this plane made a stop in Dakar, Senegal, and it still did not seem so long. I wish I could have gotten some uh, video footage of the window over Dakar, but it was so late at night when we got there that the video would have just been pitch black. There are a few more places in South Africa that I can't wait to get to. I plan on being in Cape Town, then Durban by March through May of 2000. 2018. And if I can, of course, I will try my best to get there via Delta One. Season 5 of Passport Kings is made possible by viewers like you who contribute to Passport Kings on Patreon. Being a member will get you exclusive content that can sometimes be considered too risque for my rated G audience. You'll get behind the scenes content, you'll get half off the shirt of the month, and some of you will even get to select the topic of my next video. Plus, I'll put your name in a drawing for a free trip abroad that a winner will be picked every single month. So become a Patreon today and keep Passport Kings going strong. So yo, don't get the cheap seats in the stadiums and don't get the cheap seats on the airplanes either. I mean, I know that joint is a little bit way up as far as prices go, but like I said, the minute that I'm able to do it, I will do it that way from now on. And you should too, like a king of Passport King. Peace.